name's Andy Hoskins, I'm editor in chief of BTN Europe, uh, and I'm joined today by uh, Nicholas Andrew, president and chief operating officer at CWT. Uh, Nicholas, thanks for joining me. How are you? Thank you for having me here. I'm great, and it's great to actually be back on the road again, traveling, coming in from Stockholm. Yeah, it's a, it's a good feeling, and uh, I'm sure we're going to have a good buzz on the show floor today. Let's uh, let's get straight in there. How how is business for you? Um, is the recovery coming? Yeah, I think the industry, everyone, it's a multi-year recovery for the whole industry, but it, there's really encouraging signs that we see right now. And across all three levels, the travelers, a lot of them have gotten vaccinated. They've kind of met up with their friends again and they got the courage back to get back on the road. Businesses are starting to move back to saying, let's go back to pre-pandemic rules in terms of travel, because we need our people out there meeting customers, meeting suppliers, doing deals and growing our businesses, because everyone sees the benefit of face-to-face -face meeting. WebExes and Zooms are great, but they're not the end-all solution to everything. It's a great tool, but it doesn't replace being able to see each other eye to eye and make a deal, close a deal, or sort out a problem. And then last but not least, which is the, the final piece, is governments. And I'm really encouraged by what I'm seeing from governments. They're starting to find common solutions rather than at the start where every government had their own rules. They're now starting to center on common solutions. You're seeing companies, countries opening up, just like the US announced opening up as well, which will be a tremendous boost. And, and all of that builds confidence. And we see that in two phases. One is an increased amount of bookings to the US as soon as the announcement came, because there's a dumped up need to interact with your American colleagues. Yeah. And secondly, on the hotel side, we had very much, I think it's almost 60% of the bookings were done within just a couple of days because people didn't know if the rules were going to change, if they could travel, etc. To now, where we're almost back at normal levels in terms of booking windows, in terms of advanced bookings. So that's really encouraging all of those things. So I actually think that coming back in September, we're now on a great trajectory and you see that with vaccination keeps growing as well. Yeah, it, it certainly feels like a, a sort of key point in time, as you say, with government yeah. restrictions uh, easing a little. Um, are there any markets in particular within Europe which are recovering any faster than any others for you? Yeah, so France has been really encouraging and very early on. Uh, and of course, that's mainly driven by there is a relatively large domestic market in France. The UK has picked up as well. And, and then outside of Europe, uh, you know, China is, uh, has really grown and uh, seen a tremendous improvement in China. And we're also seeing a, a great recovery in the US. So it's, it's pockets across the world. Different countries are at different phases. But you're starting to see that momentum of really encouraging amount of travel happening and not just within countries between EU countries now you're starting to see people wanting to go to the US now that you get the opportunity so I, I think we are going to head into next year on a really positive role as an industry and you see the bus here the number of people that are attending this show kind of just reinforces it yeah good to hear and actually you, you preempted one of my questions when you're talking about the uh, the advanced booking window stretching out again which is I guess a sign of some sort of return of normality but I guess I guess the really big question is and everyone's talking about it are, are business travel volumes going to return to pre-pandemic levels uh, I suppose at all and and when if you if you think yeah they will. And, and like I said everyone in the industry it looks at this and and it's a multi-year recovery process and it's going to go different for different parties for us we are incredibly encouraged where the industry is heading and that's why we're forging ahead with the investments we're taking and you've seen that during the pandemic we have rolled out a, a new global councillor platform we built up a complete follow the sun because i think travel behaviors are going to change for example where you assumed historically you could book between nine and five and that wasn't a problem where you're traveling safety and security and the hr agenda has come to the front of uh, returning to travel. And I think that's a really important part, therefore, how do you support people when they're on the road? So I don't think the question is, is travel gonna come back? It's how do you support travelers as they keep coming back? Because meeting face-to-face -face is not gonna really get replaced. And even the meetings and events business, when we talk to our customers, 19% of them see that they're gonna have meetings, and that's larger events type of thing before the end of this year, 91% of them are talking about it happening in 2022, most of them in the early part of 2022. So uh, I'm really encouraged, but I, I think you can look at the auto trajections and everyone else and, and there's different views on it. But is travel coming back? Do we need to travel? Do businesses do better when we can sit down and have a discussion face to face? Absolutely.
Yeah, of course. Good, good to hear as well. Um, and at CWT, you've had some financial restructuring recently, which was announced. Um, how, what does that mean for the company and and your sort of your path forward, I suppose? Well, I, I think a lot of businesses in the travel industry were focused on surviving during the pandemic. We didn't focus on that. We focused on making sure we could come out of this pandemic thriving. And, and, you know, so therefore having an overwhelming majority of our debt holders and owners vote to join the recapitalization of the business is for me just a fantastic endorsement of our new CEO, Michelle Freimeyer, who started the management team, the strategy and the investment plans that we have. So I'm super thrilled and, and super excited around uh, how we're going to come out of this pandemic as CWT and how we're going to really help shape the future travel industry. Fantastic. And and as we recover, um, a lot of corporates switched off booking tools um, yeah. during the pandemic. What, what are you seeing right now? Are people booking online again or is that going to be a slow shift? No, a lot of businesses are different, but you're right. At the start of it, people wanted to get control of their travel policies and understand where their travelers were. Uh, and therefore, a lot of them you know, switched down or reduced the use of the online booking tools and, and uh, relied on the comfort that TMCs provide in terms of knowledge and, and the professionalism of our staff. We've always believed it's people and technology, and you now see businesses increasingly returning back to normal. So we have many of our customers that are back at the normal online booking rates that they have. Uh, we have customers that are, are a little bit behind. It's partly driven by the country they're in, it's partly driven by the company, and it's partly driven by the policies that they are putting in place for the, for the future. Yeah, and, and you mentioned your Follow the Sun uh, setup yep. uh, just a little bit ago. Um, what other sort of investments have you made as a company and, and what technology are people looking for now, your customers? Uh, what people are looking for is, you know, health and, health and security is a key one. So another one that we invested in very early was a return to travel, which is about making sure I can say I'm Swedish, I'm traveling from Stockholm to France. What's the rules that apply? Don't give me 4,000 links off of Google that talks about COVID. Give me concrete information of what the government pages tell me. So that was one of the key investments. We also put the real time data behind that to make sure we could provide the travel dashboards to the travel managers to know where they have travelers, to know where they're broad, to get updates and information when rules change because uh, some countries have changed their travel rules 50 times over the pandemic. And of course, you don't want to leave a traveler stranded. So those were kind of the data side of it that's been really important, as well as partnership with, like we have with ISOS, to God forbid, should anything happen, how can we as a company take care of our employees and make sure they come home? Separate to that, we have used the pandemic to really say, how do we bring together our omni-channel? Because it's, and we've talked for the last three or four years around people and technology, it's not people or technology. It's the combination of having access to mobile solutions. Our messaging product has grown fantastically during the pandemic. We have over a thousand customers on our messaging or chat solution, because that's a tool that people have gotten comfortable when you sit at home or WebEx, et cetera. And then we've taken the investment to globally put a, a single travel counselor platform for all of our counselors in place. And that's allowed us to build out our Follow the Sun. It's also allowed us, as you may have seen recently, to also build that out on Amadeus. We'll have it on both Sabre and Amadeus going forward, which is, it's about making sure we have the capabilities of following our customers as they come back to traveling. Yeah, okay, um, last question then. We can't, it, it's not easy, you can't just drop, uh, you can't just pack a suitcase and get on a plane now. It's, we're yep. in a ridiculously con complex landscape. Hopefully that's gonna ease a little. Yep. Um, but how, as, as TMCs and suppliers, everyone's had to make job cuts. Yep. As we all scale back up again, are you expecting to have to bring people back in quite, quite rapidly? Yes, so like everyone, we do forecasts, and then we actually bring people back earlier than our forecast, because of course it takes time for people that sadly has had to be on furlough, etc., to get back up to speed, get to know the new systems, etc. So, so we, we do an, an immense amount of planning to make sure we're ahead of the curve of our companies when they come back. And we're in the process of bringing back hundreds of people because of the demand we're seeing across the world, which is you know incredibly encouraging, uh, of allowing people that have had to be on furlough, sadly, and across the world, now to come back and be part of the family and, and help the corporates uh, and their travelers get back on the road again and get back to an industry that is growing and where 
face-to-face -face meetings is as important as WebEx and Zooms. <laughs> yeah, I think we've all had enough of uh, WebEx and Zoom for a little while. Nicholas, thank you very much for joining me. I wish you and uh, CWC all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.